Welcome to SciTech's SpectraFlow software video tutorial series. This video will cover recording samples using tubes. Software overview. At this point in the experiment workflow, a template has been created and samples are ready to run. On the left are all the groups and tubes that were previously set up. The dark green arrow indicates the tube selected for acquisition. To select a different tube, double-click anywhere within the gray highlight, or click once on the far left. Additional controls and settings are located below the tube list. Clicking on the title will expand the panel. To view all the information, use the scroll bar or resize the panel. This button will undock the panel so it can be moved around the screen. The panel can be docked using this button or closed by selecting the X. The acquisition control panel contains buttons to start and stop recording and modify the flow rate. The actual flow rate in microliters per minute will display here while a sample is running. Expected flow rates can be found in the specifications chapter of the user guide, but measured flow rates may vary. Additional information about the tube acquisition is found here, including events to display and event rate. The instrument control panel displays user settings and gains. Select the other tabs for additional instrument control options, such as threshold and area scaling factor. The right side of the screen is a worksheet that displays data plots, gates, and statistics. Setting up the instrument. First, verify that the instrument settings are correct. Select a tube with a bright signal and an abundance of cells, such as a positive control. Load the tube onto the sample input port by pushing the tube upward until it clicks into place. Set the flow rate to low and click Start to preview the data. This experiment was set up to use SciTech assay setting. Adjust the scatter gains so they are appropriate for the sample. Use the Restart button to refresh the data shown on the plots. If a different scale is preferred, right-click on the scatter plot and open the plot properties to modify the axis scale before adjusting the gains. Low forward scatter events are typically debris, and these can be excluded by setting a threshold. In the Instrument Control panel, select Threshold and enter an appropriate value. Click Stop after all preferred instrument settings have been adjusted. The data preview will remain on the screen until a different tube is selected or new data is recorded. Adjust the P1 gate to fit all cells of interest. Review the spectral plot and confirm that all data is on scale. Select the Save As button to save these modified settings for use in future experiments. Make sure to enter a unique and descriptive name. If needed, change the P1 gate to be appropriate for the stopping criteria. For this experiment, we want the stopping gate to be on lymphocytes. We are now ready to record samples. To remove the current tube, pull straight down until the tube is released. The cytometer will automatically run a scent flush to clean the sample line and minimize sample carryover. If preferred, the next tube can be loaded before the scent flush completes. We will start with the unstained sample, which is the first tube in the reference group. Check the tube status to ensure the correct tube is selected and the cytometer is ready. Select the desired flow rate and click Record to save the data. As the tube is recording, 
the stop volume and event count that were set in the experiment template are shown. The time elapsed is shown here. The progress bar tracks whichever stopping criteria will be met first. If preferred, the sample can be manually stopped by selecting the stop button. When the recording is complete, the tube icon changes from blue to green to indicate a file has been saved. The selection arrow will automatically move to the next tube when the acquisition criteria are met. Another tube can be selected if a different running order is preferred. If the experiment contains multiple sample types, different stopping gates may be needed. For example, this experiment contains some bead-based reference controls. Now that all cell controls are recorded, we will record the bead controls. Select Start to preview the beads and adjust the forward scatter and side scatter if needed. Click Stop when there are enough events to gate on. Adjust the P1 gate around the beads. If desired, these settings can be saved. When all reference controls have been recorded, the Unmix button becomes available. At this point in the workflow, there are two options to proceed. One option is to finish recording all tubes in the experiment and then select the Unmix button. The second option is to select the Unmix button to calculate unmixing and then record the rest of the tubes in the experiment. The second option is a commonly used method because the unmixed data can be viewed while samples are recording. After live unmixing has been calculated, select Edit and go to Acquisition to change the worksheet to the preferred unmixed worksheet. The stopping criteria will now be set using stopping gates within the selected unmixed worksheet. More details on how to create and use unmixed worksheets will be covered in another video. This completes recording samples in tubes. The next video will cover the steps to set up and calculate unmixing.